let's get rolling. I will introduce myself again. My name is Jack Smithson. I am the inbound marketing strategist here at Keep and also a small business growth expert. It is uh, those two things, um, specifically what I've been doing for the last six years here, working uh, directly with uh, small businesses in like a whole bunch of different capacities, but really small businesses that are in growth mode. And so it's it is my my pleasure to bring topics like this to our live webinar and to pull in uh, on occasion specialists like uh, my co-presenter today, Crystal. And Crystal, go ahead and and uh, give them an introduction. Awesome. Well, I'll drop like the fancy uh, the fancy title. What you really need to know is I have done social media for over 10 years now. And I'm also responsible for the PR here at Keep. So those are kind of the two areas that I specialize in. And I'm really excited about today's topic. So I was so uh, grateful when Jack invited me in because anytime I can chat about um, marketing on social, especially Facebook, because I'm a little older myself and I love Facebook, um, I get like really excited. So this is like a dream come true kind of day for me. And hopefully you guys find it helpful. We have the chat open. So if you do have questions as we go along, we'll try to get to them um, as much as we can. That was quick, huh, Jack? Are you there? Okay, it's that mute. It is oh, like, okay. <laughs> it's such a crime. I, I hit that mute and then like my, my activity bar disappears. Um, oh so- God. What I was going to say was feel free to jump in with comments in the chat. And if you don't have that open yet, go ahead and open that up. We're going to use that for some Q&A um, and uh, change that parameter down at the bottom where you write your message. Uh, change that to all panelists and attendees. And that way we can all participate in the conversations going on there. And I will literally call out questions as they come up while we are going through this. And uh, we'll actually, we're gonna start with Crystal because a whole bunch of these um, that are hers because like, uh, like I said, like she said, she is a specialist. And so I will, I've got the slide deck, so I'll move these through and you just like cue me when you want a slide awesome. change. Okay, and, so we're gonna start, I have to say real quick, I just saw Janet's from Kelowna, a very specific part of British Columbia that's known for their wine. And I just had to, go there for a minute. Like I said, I missed my traveling, but uh, great wine there. Um, anyways, we're diving in here. So best practices for promoting your brand on Facebook. We're going to jump right in. So Jack, let's just dive right to the next one. The first thing I would say is you need to make the most of the Facebook landscape. So a lot of times people think these are useless, but as you see there, you've got the cover image. Jackie, you can just click through all of them and I'll kind of dive in. Learn cool. more button, the your story in the about section. And before we dive into a couple of little tidbits about these, you also wanna make sure that you're marketing with a business page. So you can't do a lot of ads and a lot of marketing with a profile. So I'm not sure where everyone's at, but if you've done a lot of marketing on Facebook, then I hope you already have a business page, but that's kind of where you wanna start. Um, one thing I'll tell you about, about the learn more button, before I worked at Keep, I didn't really think that was super important. Um, I just never had really looked that deeply at the numbers from the button. That's actually one of our top organic session drivers every month. Um, so if you have a great cover image uh, that's talking something either new, we've got a good news message up there right now of a new um, feature we have, but you want to utilize that cover image to tell a little bit more about yourself, something new that's happening with your company, or really just get people excited. And then that learn more button under there, if you've done a good job with the cover image, people are going to be clicking that and going directly to um, your website or your pricing. You can make that page whatever you want. Um, your story lets people dive in a little bit more about who you are and what you you know want to come out of your business. What is your mission and your purpose? And then the about section is very similar, but it goes into more details with like your address. And, you know, you, I think the story shows up there and you have like a whole little section. These are all areas that when you're marketing your business, you want to make sure you utilize. They're like a one and done, or you can freshen them up whenever you want. But the idea is it's like the crock pot, set it and forget it, as my grandpa used to always say. So that's definitely one thing that you might think is a waste of time or lame, but you can actually drive real organic sessions from that. So utilize the Facebook landscape. Now, okay, uh, cover oh. image, uh, just a quick question. How often um, do you change cover image? 
Um, we don't change it as often as we should. I would say change your cover image about once a quarter. And you definitely want to change it when you have something new or you're, you can use that to market like a special you have going. You can use that when, like for us, we use it when we have new features. If you're an accountant, you can use it to kind of, um, as you're getting closer to tax season, really drive home making an appointment with your accountant or tax specialist. Uh, you can use that for a variety of ways, but I would say healthy amount of time is probably once a quarter at least to change that. But it gets a lot of reach. It, they you know, Facebook will show everyone you've changed your cover image. So anyone that's following you and they, they don't just send it to a few on that one, they'll send it to pretty much your whole audience. So when you change your cover image, you get good reach on that post. You can't boost it or do anything, but it's a great way to let your um, loyal audience and customers kind of know what's going on. Very good. And, and I see that like with this cover image we have right here, it's, uh, it's essentially, it's generating interest. It's not just, hey, here's a picture of uh, what we do, or here's a picture of our uh, our office or or whatever. It's, it's actually, you're using this as um, a driver. Yeah, definitely. And then when we've had in the past, we've had like our Quiet the Doubters campaign up there, the Learn More button would go to like the actual, um, the, not the ad, but the video we had for the Quiet the Doubters, it would go to that. You can change that link for the learn more button. Um, you can change some of the words that give you some options like sign up. So you can use that in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, in this case, we kind of did a teaser for our easy automations that just came out and it was kind of supposed to just tease up the excitement for that. Awesome. So that. Perfect. Okay. So I always, I love organic social. I mean, I started 10 years ago when organic social presence really meant something. And now it does still mean something. Like I hate when I hear people say organic's dead. It's not. One of the best things you can do for an ad strategy for Facebook is have an organic presence. And by that, I mean, post once a week, comment to people talking to you on your page, um, you know, just answer their questions, be there and present on your organic page itself. By doing that, Facebook rewards you by giving you more reach from your organic and your paid efforts, meaning your paid might cost less if they see you're very active and responding to your ad comments or you're responding to page comments and you're posting regularly. And it's the same with um, like really, anything on your organic is going to get more reach and get to more people if you actually are being there regularly. At Keep, even though we have, um, we use Sprout Social for like bringing in all of our um, comments, but even though we have that, we'll respond to the comments natively, meaning on the platform itself, because by responding on there, Facebook knows we're being active and we're not using something else. And it just helps increase our reach and increase like our efforts across all, all social. All right. Okay. So I've got a couple of things. So number one, um, and just to be clear for anybody that is um, like new to uh, using Facebook um, for marketing for your small business, organic is pretty much any of your postings that you're not paying for, right? Something or mm -hmm. something you're not promoting. It's not an ad. It's not uh, something you're putting money behind. It's just organic is just the stuff you're posting. Yep, exactly. Oh. And it's the like other thing. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's just basically everything that you would be putting out on your page, but it also encompasses when you're responding to people who are talking to you on there. All of that is usually organic efforts. Got it. Okay. And then you, we touch really briefly on this and, and it's going to be a recurring theme, I think, but um, Facebook's like algorithm, like Facebook, and you'll mention this because we, I know we've, we've gone through a lot of this content and we've had lots of conversations about social, but Facebook has this algorithm or essentially these automatic rules that will help you. Like if you do things that it likes, it helps you. And if you yep. do things that it doesn't like, it doesn't help you. Exactly. It literally costs you. <laughs> if you're doing paid ads, it costs you. Um, so just because I'm curious, how many people out that are listening right now, right now are doing any organic efforts? Just because, like I said, it's my first love and I'm just kind of curious. So if you put in the chat, I'm just kind of curious, but we'll keep going as you guys are answering that. So I think Jack, we can move to the next one. Yeah, if you will jump in, like open up that chat if you don't have it open already, and then uh, let us know if you are um, actively doing uh, or uh, doing um, like organic. Oh, okay. Candace says, hey, I was told it wasn't good. Yeah. All right. 
I see Renee is. Perfect. Okay, th this is like really interesting to me. Um, Candace, I'm not sure why someone would say it wasn't good, but it is, the tricky thing is, listen, I know small businesses have, you know, they have so many hats they're wearing all the time. They have so many things that they are worried about that they're doing themselves. So what I would say is, you know, if you have to make choices, I get it, but try to just maybe set a goal of like one post a week. And I'm telling you, even from just doing increasing that, you'll see like an increase on your reach, not just in your organic, but also like possibly lower costs per lead on your um, ads. You'll maybe see lower cost per click. You know, you just want to be able to have an organic presence there because that's how you're alerting Facebook that you're not just trying to get to their audience, you're also kind of using their platform. Uh, so it. thanks for adding that, I was curious. Okay, so in terms of this, this is another one I'm really passionate about, and this is something you should consider for your ads and your organic, but create like a healthy content mix. So 80-20 is kind of the rule, and by that I mean 80% of what you're posting or putting on ads should really be to help your audience. And that sounds counterintuitive because you guys probably all don't know, I say organic is my first love, but the fact is if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. So the only reason any company would be on any social platform at all, whether it's organic or paid is to get them leads or more money. So I'm not like, I'm not against that. I am very much for it, but you're going to get more coming back if you're nurturing your audience with an 80, 20 rule. So these things can be like, the 80% we use kind of would be our blogs. We use um, guides that help our um, audience. We use things like this webinar to help our audience we serve, which are small business owners. We want to do anything we can to help them because the idea is if we help them, they're probably going to have more of a need for our services. And it's authentic. It's real. It's what any keeper I've ever talked to wants to do is help that audience. But also, at the end of the day, more comes back to you by serving that audience, as long as you're serving the audience that you're trying to acquire. Um, so this is like really important. Look at your ads and, you know, there's different ways to get new leads. I mean, which is what we're going to really be diving into, but you can help an audience and send them to a page that's a blog that still has ways for them to go further with your brand. Like we have usually links to our demo or free trial or, you know, sometimes we use gated um, creative content that we gather lead information. These are all ways that still serve that 80-20, but give them another, a further step to take should they want more. <coughs> so make sure you're using a healthy content mix. Got it. And uh, and we had, I remember this, we had a pre-conversation about um, sharing, like sharing other posts uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, other things that may help your um, like your target audience, things that may also engage them, um, but not affect you like competitively. Like I remember you said, yeah, totally. don't, don't share your competition's posts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, I was laughing, Jack, because I've seen people do that where they're sharing competitors' posts. It's like, great, you want to help your audience. I love the idea of sharing. We do that at Keep. We share what we call unowned content, which are other people's posts that help our same audience. So the only joke I was kind of making is ensure you're not like sharing any direct competitors. If they're co like coaches or consultants, you know, and you do the same thing, you might rather share something else. And I saw Tom has a question about what do you call the 20%? Tom, that is where the money is. Uh, that's really going to be like, we do demo posts. Uh, we do um, like free trial posts on our social and we do those in the ads as well. And those are going to be closer to acquisition. Think of that as really bringing home the warm audience you already have. So driving them over that finish line to purchase your service or purchase your product, you're really driving it home with those 20%. So for us, it'd be demos and free trials for, let's see, um, for a consultant, it could be an online course where you're really pushing to buy the course itself versus you're talking about separate topics about the course, like, you know, warming them up to the idea of the course. So, so like that's lead, how like lead capture. That. So anything where you're actually doing yeah. lead capture would fall into that 20. Exactly. Totally. Or, okay. Uh, so yeah, taking people from like, it, it's kind of like taking them across the aisle from interest to interaction, right? You're getting them exactly. to like, hey, just schedule with me or let me give you a quote or let's do a demo or 
um, hey, here's your, you know, here's your free appointment. Here's your free workout. Here's your free nutrition consultant, like whatever it is. It's like taking action. That'd be part of the 20 is either lead capture or asking for activity interaction versus the 80, which is more of like, I'm educating you. Yeah. And Jack, you fall into both of those categories sometimes. Sometimes the content you put out is really much like all about educating and it falls down 80%. And other times you're driving them to something a little bit more active. So Jack is definitely an expert on that 80-20 and I think he follows it really well. He does a good job of mixing that up. In the 20%, we include CTAs. In all your posts, you want a CTA, but in the 20%, your CTA will be very direct. Like, um, try us out for 14 days for free or come see our demo. In your 80% type post, your CTA would be click to see this blog or um, get this great guide. Um, So what is a CTA? A CTA is a call to action. So all social posts, just to let you guys know, all social posts should have a call to action. Where do you, what do you want them to do? Where do you want them to go? It could even be just like comment with what you think about A, B, or C. That's still a call to action. So good call out Candice, but all, or, and Claudia, all of those um, posts should have CTAs. Okay. So this one is a really important one. And I was telling Jack, it's like, so it's so important. It haunts my dreams at night, but <laughs> you need to find ways when working with like Facebook to own your audience. You, when you're working on Facebook or any social platform, they own your playground. They own your sandbox. So I kind of put this as a joke, these rules, but they own everything you do on there. The only way to own your audience is finding ways to collect those leads and taking them offline. If Facebook were to close down tomorrow, how would you get that audience back? Only if you're collecting their leads and taking them off Facebook, you don't own that audience. So when we talk today, we're going to go into details about how different ways you can do that, but really find ways to get them to your website, sign up for something, um, give them your information because that's how you can keep in touch with them. And I'm not saying hound them for sales, but hopefully you're going to keep nurturing them and giving them what they need in order to make a buying decision. So this one's important. And we'll keep talking about this a little bit because one of the mistakes we'll go over in, in a bit will be about, you know, when you don't own your audience. So right. Jack, I think that's good on that one. Cause I think we'll keep weaving it in. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Cause well, I was going to bring up like gating content mm-hmm. as a CTA and, and we, Oh, we do that a lot. Like on our, on our blog, in most of those blog posts, not most of them, but a, a good portion of them, you can click to download the PDF and it it opens up like lead capture. Like, hey, share your, mm-hmm. your name and your email and boom, you've got your download. So there's creative ways that you can uh, get like get leads, just, you know, even gating content and, you know, yep. hey, content is, it's, especially if your content is great, people will trade their information for it. Yeah. And you just nailed, you nailed it on the head there with that, Jack. If your content is not worth giving you a name, email, phone number, they will not give it to you. And I, I look at even my own buying behavior, like think about what you do on websites that gate things and what kind of things are you willing to give an email or phone number for? Um, because there's no such thing as a free lunch anymore. And your audience knows what you're trying to do with that. So it needs to be high quality content that you're gating and something that they're going to find very useful in order to um, give you that information. And that also is like where the trust and the authenticity starts with your leads. So make sure that you're not using clickbait and you're not doing anything that's not going to get you the results you want. Because if you turn them off at the beginning, it's very much like, hitting on a girl at a bar or guy for all the ladies out here. If you do it wrong on the first, um, you know, little, what do you call those pickup line? You're probably going to actually (laughs) struggle to go any further. It's the same thing with the, with gated content. Yeah, it is. It's hard to overcome that, that, that that first initial failure. (laughs) For sure. And I speak from experience, just kidding. Okay. So, Here we go. Uh, Steps for making the most out of your budget. This is really important because, you know, I am frugal. I put it out there into the world, but I don't like to spend a lot unless I'm getting what I want out of it. So one of the biggest things you can do to make the most out of your budget is test. Um, You should test your audiences. 
And I always say, don't just use lookalike audiences. You should kind of mix it up with lookalike audiences and interest-based targeting. Um, interest-based targeting are, you know, you should know your audience well enough that you know the kind of things they're into and find Facebook, like Facebook interests that will target those kind of people. Um, so to give you an idea for us, we use uh, small business and entrepreneurship. That's an interest we'll use um, and we'll sometimes partner that with email marketing. If it's a, uh, if it's a blog about email marketing or sales, if it's a blog about sales, you're going to keep opening up to a bit of a broader. Now that's going to be your top of funnel broad audience. And then you'll keep funneling them down and qualifying them more and more as you go. But yeah, test your audiences, definitely good to use lookalike, but don't use them alone. And you're going to test your creative content, your captions, and your ad types. Like ad types could be video. It could be lead ads. It could be whatever you're using to kind of hook them and get them interested. Test all of that. And you can do that in two ways. You can test that on in Ads Manager for like a week with a low budget. Or you can test it on organic and actually put it out into the world and see if your own audience that's already captivated by your brand that followed you is interested. And then, uh, Jack, you asked me a really good question earlier about how do you kind of like, what are you looking for? Right. On that yeah. how, do you, how do you know when to, uh, to boost something or how do you know that something is doing well? Yeah. So when I test things on organic, I already have an idea every month about what our average reach is. And you want to look at it about average every month. And average reach is really the people Facebook's showing your posts to. So what I do is every month I take a quick snapshot of my overall average reach on a post. And then when I'm testing things, I'm going to look and see, did that post on its own, without any money, do above average in reach? Reach is like a real vanity metric. But what it will tell you is, did Facebook like it? And as Jack was saying, like, if Facebook doesn't like it, it just costs you in the end. So you need to play by their rules when you're using Facebook to collect leads. And then you use that to get better metrics that you need. So if you're testing it on organic, check for reach and your average engagement. See if those are, if what you're testing is above that, then that means that's probably good to put an ads manager and throw some money on it. If it's below, I don't even mess with with it because Facebook's already letting me know it didn't really hit their qualifications. And when you're testing in ads manager, you want to check like either cost per lead or cost per click, whatever the goal of that ad is, you want to see how much is it costing you to get the goal. And if it's above or like if it's above average and your, your ads doing well, if it's below what you normally get on the same post with the, that goal, then it's not worth posting with more money or taking it any further. Um, can you speak to a successful campaign in terms of cost per acquisition email collected? Um, I think that these change depending on what your personal goals are. Every business is different. If I spoke to what ours were, it'd be vastly different than what your guys will be because you have different budgets. But what I will say is, again, look at those averages and that's how you're going to know what's doing well for your own campaigns look at what you're doing as a whole for each of those goals. Like if your goal is lead generation, how do other po other ads with lead generation do? And if this is doing better or average, then that's good to keep putting money to. If it's below, stop the bleeding. Um, can you create a group from your business page? Yes, you can. Um, and that's a great strategy. And it's a great way, it's a long-term nurture play for leads, but I think those tend to be strong in the long run. Um, I think that could be a whole, uh, webinar on its own, Jack, um, right. Facebook groups. But Candice, I think you're onto something. And I'm always a fan of the long play. I think that keeps feeding you for years instead of some of these uh, fast plays, but you kind of need to work with both of them. So today's webinar is a little bit more on some of the fast ones. Okay, Jack, well, let's go to the next one. But you're right. Oh, like your your content. Oh no, not at all. But you're right. Your content is. I mean, it's doing it's doing both. And we'll we'll talk mm -hmm. about um, the because at the end we're talking about you know taking these leads and and email nurturing them. You know, uh, essentially, you know, you're capturing and 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 then you're working on them. But with all your your content and your calls to action, your education, it really is uh, meant to like essentially percolate leads like you're it is it's all a long game and people are going to um their interest will peak uh when it peaks like we have no idea when it's going to peak when, and and people generally interact with you when their interest has peaked or the necessity for your product or service has become critical 
Um, and in social media, your, your job is just staying like top of mind and giving, you know, you, you talk about, hey, posting um, as often because, well, Facebook likes that, but, uh, and it, it gives you more visibility when you do that, but you're doing that for your audience and staying top of mind in their feed so that when their interest does peak, like you're, you're there to get that sale. Exactly. Uh, oh, Singh just posted a great question. Um, and to be honest, okay, he says, what's better sales in your opinion, traffic or conversion? You need them both, my friend. I wish I could say one is more than the other, but traffic is going to lead to conversion if you've set your website up correctly. Um, so when it comes to social media, media, traffic is one of the first indicators you're doing what you need to be doing. Um, because you're not always going to collect leads on every post. Like I said, 80, 20, you know, some of those 80 will still fall and become a lead, but it's like, you, you need to be checking the traffic. If you're driving traffic, that means they're interested in what you're doing and they will convert if you set your page up effectively. If you're seeing a lot of traffic and no conversion, I always say there's something wrong with the page. Um, so there's a quick answer for that. Um, okay, another way to get the most out of your budget, we talked briefly about this, but it's really tough to A-B test on Facebook. So when I'm saying tests on the, the slide before, I understand that gets tricky and the algorithm could change in the middle and so many things happen. But if you split your audience and run two ads for the same week, you can pick an audience uh, to put more money to once you see the winner. So um, you can try one that's maybe like with a video, same caption, but a video, and one that's with an image and same caption. And, to the, and you split that audience to kind of see which that same group of people based on however you're segmenting your list likes which ad. And then you put the, the winner takes all and you put the rest of the budget for the rest of the time on that, the ad that wins. So that's what I would suggest there because um, it's, it's valuable to kind of see how they take it. A lot of times people only look at the cost and I get it. Like I said, I'm frugal, but sometimes you have like a diamond in the rough. And if you didn't even like test it, you don't know which one's going to be better and your cost could go way down or your, your um, overall conversion in an area could go way up. So test two different options, especially if it's a bigger campaign or a longer kind of, you want to use the ad a bit longer, test two and see which one works. And, and minimal differences between the two, right? Yeah. Like if you ch have a different caption, a different content like different image or video and a different audience you're not going to know which was really the winner or not so try minimal differences like i said maybe it's the difference of the image versus a, the video or maybe it's two different captions with the same piece of content and by splitting your audience you'll see what they prefer and then you can test that out and you know jack i know nicole does this all the time with her emails as well and it's like such a great strategy and sometimes the smallest differences lead to big outcomes and returns so definitely same thing with social but you have to be a little careful run them at the same time so you're dealing with the same um algorithm because the algorithm can change at any time but if you do that you'll have a clear winner yeah um nicole is our our email specialist and she will a b test um, you know, subject lines, even using capitals in a subject line versus not. I mean, it's, yeah, like, like crazy stuff. But yeah, it's, it's minimal changes so that you actually can isolate what is working versus what's not. Yeah. Okay. And then, oh, so this one is, uh, I fought this one for a long time, which is kind of funny. But um a while back when I worked at a different company, I wanted to see which was more beneficial, ads manager or boost. And everyone's on to ads manager now, but what I'll actually tell you is I did a manual, my version of ABC testing back then. I tried boosting only for two weeks and then I tried ads manager only for two weeks. And then I tried a combination of using boost and ads manager. For anyone new to this out there, a boost is when you boost an organic post and you put some money to it. You have a little less um, fine tuning on your audience, a little less um, control over those ads. And then ads manager are any real ads that you're putting out on um, through ads manager. What I actually found when I did that was that the combination of ads manager with some boost did the best. Um, things change all the time though. And what I do know is if you only have time for one, 
and you're only interested in one, it was going to be boost or ads manager, you should use ads manager. It can be a bit intimidating. And I think Jack just put some links for some help on getting to know ads manager, mm -hmm. which will be really important for anyone just starting out. Um, but learn how to use it. And if you're going to eventually hire like an agency to run your ads, learn enough that you can manage to it so that you know what your ads manager or your ad agency is doing. But it's really important to understand it enough as a business owner that you aren't wasting money, but it's going to be more powerful than a boost. And it's going to be the best bang for your buck if you can't do a little bit of both. So um, they let you set your budgets to whatever you need pretty much. And um, you can ha use ads manager with a small budget. So don't let that scare you. It's not just for big budgets. Um, but yeah, definitely use ads manager. So Jack, I'm so glad you found those um, for everyone out there. And that's what he <clears throat> has here on image, but that will be really helpful to anyone just starting out. Yeah, I, I went to the uh, unofficial uh, um, home, unofficial help center for everything everywhere, which is YouTube. And uh, I grabbed uh, two links and I put them both in there. And one is for uh, this one. And I, we have zero affiliation with either of these. Um, I just wanted to grab two really quick resources that you can use if you're not familiar with Ads Manager uh, that are current. So this one here especially is, was posted two months ago. So this is going to be the most current information. And this will give you a you know 13 minute boost into understanding uh, Ads Manager because uh, of course we can't possibly educate you in this short of a period of time. So I wanted to give you some resource there. Yeah. And just a shameless plug, actually, it's kind of funny, Jack, just last week, we recorded a podcast that will be coming out in the next few weeks um, on Small Biz Buzz, our key podcast. We had an ad agency for Facebook ads um, come on and talk to us about what to look for if you're looking for an ad agency and kind of some red flags. Um, so if you're looking at possibly getting an ad agency to help you with this in the future, it was a great episode. Um, she taught me a lot. You'll hear in the podcast. She taught me a lot of things I didn't even know. So um, she's been in the business a really long time. So check out that episode. It should be coming out in a few weeks, but it's with Takara Drucker and um, good stuff on ads agency and what to look for with social. That's small biz buzz. Yeah. Perfect. Small biz buzz. That's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a good plug because that's, I'm sure that's fantastic information. So not shameless at all. <laughs> I know I say it's shameless because I just threw it in there just now when I was thinking about it, but honestly, it was really helpful. Um, okay. And the bonus tip is don't force it. Like it sounds funny, but I've seen people, they spend money on their content and then when they put it out, it doesn't do um, well. And to be honest, sometimes that's been us, right, Jack? Like I'm not going to go into details because that would be. Uh, I don't want to get fired. But just you're kidding. just trying to, you, you've got some content in, in, and and people are just determined that that content is going to be successful. But, yeah. uh, you know, your your audience is the one who is telling you if it's successful or not based on how they interact with it. And that's what Facebook goes by. And so Facebook may be yeah. trying to tell you, hey, uh, people don't organically like this. <laughs> well, and Facebook has vested interest too. So, I mean, it's not just about the audience, although that plays heavily on the algorithm, but you know, I was telling you earlier, Jack, like sometimes you a year ago for videos, they maybe wanted like a minute and a half on organic videos. Now they're pushing three minutes and I'm not sure if anyone noticed that there it's because they're starting to put ads in the middle of longer video content. So now they reward you with reach um, and all those other things like engagement and comments and shares and reactions and all that. They reward you for both that as well as the length of your video because they want to find more ad space. So they're putting them in the middle of these videos. So anyway, just don't force it because I think the smartest thing we've done is when we have something that's not working, Jack, like it's crazy, but you see something just stops immediately and it's because it's not working. So pull the things that aren't working. Um, you know, great content. You can make it on your phone. You can do a video. You know your business more than anyone else. We have our CEO do videos on his phone and they do great on his, on his um, platform, on Twitter, on Facebook, because he's just sharing con He's sharing what he already knows, a wealth of knowledge. And it doesn't have to cost a lot of money to have great content, but if it's not working in the ad, just don't force it. So um, that's, that's all I'll say about that. Um, I think like, just keep an eye on the metrics, check in. And if it's not working, change it up. You can get to the same result by just changing out the content. 
Got it. And uh, just uh, responding to questions in, uh, Tom asked to share the name. And so that is Small Biz Buzz. And I put the link to um, our YouTube videos because I know we have a whole bunch of the Small Biz Buzz posted in there. Also, I think they all make it there when they're released. Right. You guys probably just heard my roommate yell at my dog. Um, but that's <laughs> the way it goes when you're working from home, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't have kids running around, but my dog, she makes up for it. Okay, here we go. Best ways to generate leads from Facebook. This is like, this is what everyone's been waiting for. So organic leads, organic leads are going to really be like sharing content that links to your website, your blog, or your lead magnets. Um, it's really, really a great strategy. And guess what? It's free unless you decide to boost it, but you could add a small boost to these and that increases the reach and website visits. Um, and it's easy to be tracking your Google through Google analytics or whatever you use to like track your website traffic. You can see when these things are, um, are working. And I forgot actually, Jack, I meant to put this in here, but another bonus tip, I guess, would be use your UTM parameters for anyone that doesn't know that it's basically what you add at the end of a website so that you can track um, down to the ad or the post what where it's coming from. I know basically like this post here on the left was going directly to is this a guide or a blog, Jack? Looks like um, a blog. This is yeah, this is a blog post. Okay, so this is going to a blog. I, when I go and look in Google Analytics, I know exactly how many sessions this post itself sent to that website, that at web address. So it's really important to be using trackers um, as you start doing leads. You wanna know what's working and what isn't. And again, you know, it's great if the posts are getting, this one only got one share, so it's not that great. But it's great if your posts are doing really well. Um, but if the goal of this post, which it is, is to get sessions, what I'm going to want to look is to look at how many sessions it drove because at the end of the day I care how many engagement it's getting but only to keep Facebook happy what I really want are the sessions so if it got a great amount of sessions but not so many engagements I would be okay with that um, so track all your stuff okay right. and here's, you here's a quick example of like here's um, the UTM parameters are right up here mm-hmm right and all this stuff so we use these trackable links and you can create these trackable links with the UP, yep. UTM parameters and it tells you exactly what people are doing and where they're going and how they're engaging Super yeah handy. totally and it helps me really identify what strategies are working or not um let's see when you boost something is it beyond your audience um, yeah, it will go to either a custom audience, a lookalike audience, or it can go based on the interest targeting I was talking about. So if I'm saying, let's see, this one is for S for software as, yeah, okay. So as for this one, marketing tools, I'd probably want to do interest based. And what I would do is I would set up two. I would go for anyone interested in small business entrepreneurship, and then layer it. they allow you to narrow it. So I would add a narrowed layer and I would say, and marketing tools or, and um, I might even pick some of our competitors and our own company name, which I also do for things like this. So I could do, and people interested in blah, 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 and Infusionsoft. And then when that happens, it really kind of um, narrows people down to our, who are looking for tools. And this is a blog they would be really interested in. And then when they look at it, boom, bam, done. Okay, so lead generation ads on Facebook. Um, there's so many options for these and we're gonna go through a bunch, but basically these are ones you would wanna be putting through um, ads manager. And this is where we're gonna spend oh, like the rest of the time probably before Jack comes in. So let's go to the next one. This is a lead generation ad and it's going, you can see to a page where we're, it's a gated piece of content. So we attract them on social, we'll boost it to an audience we think will be interested in it. And then the link itself will go to something that hopefully they're interested in enough to put in their email or their phone number or whatever you kind of set up on your landing page. So this is going directly from Facebook to a landing page. When they put that information in, guess who owns that audience? You do. So if you set your landing pages up correctly and your gated content and it's something they're into, you're going to now own the audience that you've got on Facebook versus them owning your audience. So that's exactly what I was talking about earlier. Okay, the Perfect. next one, Jack. Great example. Yeah, good pick, Jack. Okay, 
this one is um, a lead ad. And these are new in the last couple years, but basically it's like filling out a lead form on Facebook. So you can see on the left, they did their ad. They boosted it to whoever they wanted. When the person wanted to sign up, they signed up right on Facebook. And then you collect those ads from Facebook. So this strategy is great. But remember, this strategy is really for people already like close to being ready to make a decision. You know, you don't want to use this for every ad, but these are going to get you quick ads. Um, and the cool thing is you go in and download them, or we're going to be talking a lot about like how you can kind of utilize CRM and uh, adopt these very easily, but you can download them directly from the ads manager and then you own that audience. Right. And the barrier to entry is really low because it's so easy for them to, you know, cause it's like, Hey, you know, full name, email. And a lot of times, and I've seen it pulls the information from my, um, uh, my, like my, my, so if I'm browsing with my personal profile and I go, yeah. it, it will pull in the email that I, that I use for like Facebook and the name that I use for Facebook. So it makes it really easy for people it's to opt in. Similar. And let's see, um, we've got a question here. Can you get leads from a post? You can get leads from a post. What we were showing you on the slide before is exactly that. So you can put out an organic post, which is a link to a blog or to a gated um, piece of content. And the landing page you set up will have your lead form on it, your web form. So it's important you set your landing page up before you want to put these posts out. But once you do, you can gate that and be able to collect those leads that way. Yep. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, landing pages because I've got some stuff on yeah. uh, our web form builder and our landing page builder and how to uh, run automation from these opt-ins. So some really good stuff uh, just a okay. little bit further down the road. Okay. So these are five winning strategies using lead ads. Um, and these w can work for anyone. So let's go ahead and go into it. Oh, quickly, uh, Candace said, I don't understand where the signup info is and where it goes. Um, yeah. Are we talking about specifically from, if we're talking about from the lead ads, um, the lead ads is going to collect that information and it, it keeps it for you. It's like, it kind of like keeps a spreadsheet of people who have opted in using the lead ad for you, unless you, uh, unless you use a connector. And um, we have actually, here go, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to yeah, throw this in the chat because there are connectors out there like Zapier. And, and if you've ever uh, had to connect, you know, one app to another app, you're probably familiar with Zapier. Um, Zapier has a connector between um, Facebook lead ads and Infusionsoft and Keep so that when somebody does opt in, instead of it sitting there waiting for you to go get it, it will go directly to your Keep CRM or your Infusionsoft CRM and it can, boom, instantly start automation. And we'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Perfect. Yeah, that's definitely the way to do it. It makes it pretty seamless. Okay, we can jump to the next one. Okay, so one winning strategy is to qualify your lead. So you can use the lead ad to ask a customized, customizable question that will help qualify a lead. That way you know which leads are hot or not. So if they answer that question and it qualifies them to be a lead of yours, for us, maybe it's like, um, are you a small business? I, I, ours would probably be more specific, but that's the best I can come up with here on the fly. But are you a small business? Yes or no. If it's yes, then that's one we want to follow up on. If it's no, then it might not be. But right there from just asking a customized um, question on a lead ad, you can have a better idea of who you're talking to and make sure you're spending your time where you need to be. Okay, next is using video. I think we've talked briefly, but video gets a little bit more reach and Facebook loves video. So these are great ways to attract your leads and you can add a lead form at the bottom. Um, when you're an ads manager, you go and add, do your ad and then you add the lead form. And so when they click the button, they go directly to the form and you will definitely wanna place in your video the um, call to action early so that people know what you're wanting them to do and you don't lose the audience. You know, like um, a goldfish has like such a small attention span and it turns out humans have less attention span these days than the goldfish. So the call to action should be early and then <laughs> catches their attention. And then if they stick around, they'll click that lead form button and go directly to your lead form to collect them, their lead information. I, I blame Sesame Street <laughs> for my short attention span because Sesame Street is all like 15 second video montages. 
And uh, there we go. That's that's why I have such a short attention span. That's I actually saying. blame social media and the speed of the internet these days. I, <laughs> I can't keep up with anything. I'm literally a thumb scroller on everything I do nowadays. Um, okay, use limited time offers. So create urgency. Like if you're creating urgency, this post did it really well. Join by the 21st of October and you'll get the rest of the year on us. Um, who wouldn't want to do that? Uh, that's like three months of, or two, yeah, three months of, free service. And I think that's awesome. So point being, create a limited time offer for whatever your business is, and then they'll, you'll be able to kind of add a lead form for that. So you create the urgency in the post and the ad, and then with the lead form attached, you directly collect leads right from there. And yes, FOMO works on like everyone. Hopefully. It does. Yeah. Fear of missing out. If you don't know, if you haven't heard that term, the uh, FOMO, it's fear of missing out and it works. Like it, it works for our webinars because we do, whenever we do a webinar topic, we do it on a Tuesday and a Thursday and Nicole sends out the, like the last chance, don't miss out before the Thursday one. And Thursday always, we, we always like double attendance on Thursday because of the, the, you know, the limited uh, availability and the fear of missing out. See, you guys are lucky that you're here on the Tuesday because we have time for all your questions. Okay. That's right. There's course, the busy. <laughs> course signups. For a lot of coaches and consultants out there, um, especially in 2020 now, people are really taking advantage of going virtual and doing virtual course signups. Uh, there's one that got me and I signed up for um, how do I become uh, a painter really? And it's like a huh, abstract painting course, but they did the same thing to me that you see here in this picture. It's like the ad got me excited. I was like really wanting to like try to be a painter, which by the way, went awfully, but it was fun trying. And then I signed up right there. I put my form information, filled it all out, you know, and it was really seamless. Everything went easy from there. So sign up from a course using a lead form. That's a great way to, um, to kind of utilize a lead form. That's awesome. And and this is also like a, a, a hot tip for, and this is content creation, but um, any PowerPoint presentation can become a course. So if you take a PowerPoint and you write out like your notes for each slide and then convert it to a PDF, boom, you have a course. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Great. It's a great way to, you know, increase revenue, especially like this year has been so crazy, but course signups are great. You can really make a course about almost anything. Uh, we have a customer, Tanya, who does junkyard and she talks about like, you know, courses or she has all kinds of content around what, how to know what to get rid of. She also does a septic tank um, and she does she goes, she used to do them in person. She's probably doing them online now, but she would go and train hotels on how to check their septic tanks and what to be aware of. You can literally have a course for anything if you're, if you know the audience you're serving. So, okay, next. And lead magnets. So there's one here and uh, we showed you a couple of them kind of throughout, whether you use a uh, video or a graphic, but this helps you kind of attract them with like content that they know is valuable. And that's why it's called a lead magnet. Then when they click the form, they go and the lead ad, they'll actually go ahead and fill out their information and be able to download it all from there. But you collect their lead information to continue communicating with them. It's really seamless. It's great. And again, re using content you have is a great way to do. If you already had a blog on this, you can do a gated version on a landing page and that's what you use in your lead app on Facebook and boom, bam, collect those leads, get them off Facebook. Like yeah. Facebook's a great way to utilize their audience, but if you can't take that audience again off onto your own, it's not going to do you good in the long run. Wrong. Yeah. Lead magnets are magic and you can, you can make them out of uh, household items. And I'm being a little bit sarcastic, but you can make them out of like content that you already have, like things that you put in emails or uh, frequently asked questions um, or like short videos, or you can take your blog posts, uh, like uh, Crystal just mentioned, and, you know, gate it behind a landing page builder. And if you have a landing page builder, it makes it just that much easier. Uh, but really, I mean, there's just so much uh, opportunity. Checklists, people love checklists people if you have a yeah. checklist for anything and every one of your businesses if you're um, if you have a consultative sales process uh, then your your service I guarantee you there's a checklist involved probably a few of them and uh, people will trade their lead information for those checklists and that's an easy thing to make like my wife is super like uh, a type 
golden personality. She checklists all day, every day. I never make lists. <laughs> I have a list going right now, but only because I couldn't keep it in my head any longer. But idea is checklists do work well. Okay, this one I, I love because a lot of times knowing what not to do is a great way to start out because sometimes you're going to need some trial and error to know what to do. But mistakes that can cost you are important. So I love this. Um, if you don't own your audience, I can't stress it enough. If you do everything on Facebook and only retarget from Facebook and everything's on Facebook, they own you and your leads. But if you can use lead ad forms um, or if you can use any method that we've talked about today, you'll have your leads and hopefully you can download them and put them directly into your CRM. Jack, as you said, this is exactly what we were talking about with Zapier. Like you can have that all automated so that the minute they fill out the form, it goes into your CRM and uh, then you can do tons of stuff with that. You can have any kind of follow-up automated. It's like priceless. So the next mistake is not implementing automatic follow-up. So it might seem like this is really a vested interest on our part, but there's several blogs up there that talk about how this is a major mistake. If you don't have automatic follow-up with your lead ads from Facebook, they're going to get bored. They're not going to remember they filled out the form because they did it on a whim, like at 3 a.m. when they were browsing on, couldn't sleep and browsing on Facebook. Whatever it is, you want automatic follow-up that's like right away and is going to help you keep your leads warm. Um, so definitely you want to consider that experience for your users. Make it seamless. Make them feel like you wanted them to come around, whatever it was. Um, you know, that's going to be the best bang for your buck, which leads us into Jack's, one of Jack's many expertise levels here. So Jack, absolutely, throwing it to you. So yeah, we'll talk about uh, um, how to convert Facebook leads into clients with automated email follow-up. And um, just going back in, in like my last comment on what Crystal was talking about is it's like speed to lead is, uh, it's a thing. Like the sooner you get to them, the more likely you are to progress them into that uh, sales relationship because you're catching them when their interest is high and people's interest can change in 10 minutes because we just get diverted. We've, you know, we, we, it's not that we lose interest. We just, uh, our, our, our interest level goes to other places and our, and, and so catching people quick and using automation that way is a super hot tool, especially especially like we're talking speed to lead, but especially if you have to deliver something, like if somebody is signing up for that ebook or that free report or, um, you know, access to your video course or whatever it is, having an automated system to deliver that and then deliver follow-up nurture can be yeah. the, the, make a huge difference. Yeah. No one wants to be the gazelle in this picture. That's <laughs> right. all right. So, so we're talking about capturing leads. And so you capture that lead and then what? And I purposely got this one where it's almost to lead capture because all the rest of the pictures were kind of grizzly and I didn't want to offend anybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think I could take it any closer. All right. Okay. So when it comes to, uh, to those leads, we're probably bringing them in, in in three different ways, especially from social media. One, if we're driving to a landing page and we have a, a landing page builder built into Keep and Infusionsoft, so you can build that, you can use, it'll automatically produce a URL or you can assign it uh, a URL. So one of your subdomains um, and drive to that landing page. And then when they fill it out, it automatically creates the contact record in your CRM and can um, start uh, nurturing or delivering. Same thing with web forms. This is an example of a, a web form from a, a web form builder and you can build web forms and have them like all over your website, mm -hmm. uh, especially for um, lead capture. Like there was an example earlier where we drive traffic to a blog post. Well, you can be positive that we have um, lead capture on that blog post so that people can engage. Like we probably have a, a little PDF there. It says, Hey, click to download the PDF. And then there's lead capture. So have lead capture, um, you know, web forms on your website in multiple areas, tons of areas, um, whether it's, you know, for offering lead magnets or, you know, I'll give you this for your information. Um, or if it's, Hey, take the next step in our sales process. You'll have those there and just driving them to that page that has the lead capture can make a huge difference when um, you're, you know, you're sending traffic over to your website from uh, your social media, like your Facebook. The other thing is lists, right? Uh, 
um, your uh, CSV files or your uh, Excel spreadsheets. And so if you're using those uh, lead forms or those uh, lead ad or what are they called? Um, uh, the, the lead forms on Facebook where they oh, are. Yeah. yeah. Lead ad. There you go. Um, it's, it's essentially going to produce this for you. You're going to go and you're going to download those and then you'll import. And so you can go any of those routes using uh, your CRM, especially using our CRM. And, and then the next thing is, Hey, we want to use the automation to nurture because we want to take advantage of that interest and get them over like over that hurdle. And, and I, I mentioned this a lot. It's taking people from interest to interaction mm -hmm. and, that's what I'm, I'm showing in this. I've got an example of a, um, a landing page that I built and I threw this together with our, our landing page tools. And a lot of landing pages you'll see have like a lot of different layers and more pages, but I made one small and concise so I could put it on this, uh, on this slide. But here's an example of my lead magnet. 25 things you should automate your small business. And then when people fill this out, it instantly creates the contact record. And then I put them into a nurture and out goes this first series, which is like, hey, click here to download. And the automation can track if they click to download. And if they don't click to download an email one, then we've got a contingency plan a day later to try again. And you would be surprised how many people will not download your lead magnet on the first try. <clears throat> because, and even after they signed up, it, it seems like counterintuitive, like what in the world? Why didn't they download it? Because they're busy. And the email gets, they want, to, they want to download it, but they don't have time. And then they forget about it. And then it gets buried in the inbox. All right. So you're actually doing them a favor and yourself a favor by getting that automated email out for a second try. Reminding, hey, don't miss out. We saw you didn't download this. Don't miss out on it. And they're like, oh, yeah, I totally wanted to download that. And it may take a second try. It may take a third try. But the cool thing is that this process will stop once they download it like I have here, it says when they click to download the ebook, the delivery email stop. So this whole system stops. So theoretically, if they did download it, email number one, they wouldn't get reminder two, three, four, five. And then the automation can start the next thing, which would be the engagement email. So now they've downloaded, we know they downloaded that lead magnet. And now the automation can start with the next step, which would be trying to get trying to get people engaged. Hey, what is that next step? Like, how do you get people in the door with you? Is it the the demo, or is it uh, getting a quote, or is it having a free consultation, or is it that free workout, or that free um, nutrition plan, or you know whatever it is for your business? That's what you're doing next, and you're using the same type of automation in like spaced out increments, staying top of mind. And, you know, you're building on that lead magnet that you delivered. It's like, hey, now that you've consumed our lead magnet, you know how great we are, what we do, and you know how we're solving problems. Let's talk more. And your chances of engagement, your chances of closing go way up, especially after they've got that lead magnet and they've learned that you are a subject matter expert and they like your content and now they trust you and they've learned about your personality, uh, this can be a huge win as far as conversion goes. And of course, it starts with like Facebook. We're driving to this thing yep. from our Facebook post. And the best thing is the follow-up and that natural um, nurturing is all happening. You set it up once and it's all happening while you're doing other things for your business or while you're continuing to drive on your social strategy. It's, it's just like so important. The demands on small businesses are just increasing and people expect things to be faster and faster as we discussed. So having this all set up and making sure you're still nurturing your leads when you can't nurture them, you know, one-to-one -one is really critical. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that because yeah, you, you do build it and then it runs in the background and it's doing your nurture for you while you're doing the important things, which are um, working with the hot leads and fulfilling on the business that you've already sold. Yeah, or uh, hotter leads that are ready to actually, you know, take the jump. It's priceless, honestly. Right. People that are ready to hand you money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect. This is another example from a web form. And again, I've just thrown together an example of a web form and, and people might click to this from your uh, Facebook post or um, they may find this on your web page when they click to your web page for your your article or for your content or wherever you're sending them. And then when they fill that out, the automation can run a system like this. Hey, it sends them a welcome email and then queues up a task for you 
to make a phone call, which is boom, quick speed the lead. Or if you're nurturing them, then it can queue up that same type of repetitive email nurture saying, hey, here's the information that you asked for and let's take that next step. Let's go, let's go the, the, the next step of the journey. Let's have that appointment. You know, click here to auto schedule on my calendar or uh, click here to get a quote or you know, whatever that next call to action is. What I love about that is at the bottom, it literally asks what they're interested in. So you can segment the lists that you're getting in and send them only the things they're interested in. It's like oh, yeah. I hate when people send me the things I don't want, like just send me what I want and I'm probably much more likely to convert. Yeah, the, the automation is smart. So if I fill this form out and I say, hey, I'm interested in your SEO services, then the follow-up, the automated follow I get is all about SEO and, you know, vice versa for every one of these. So the automation is smart and can give you, give that, that person the exact follow-up based on what they chose or what they selected here. So that was a really good point. Yeah. And then last uh, is the spreadsheet, right? We can import, we can export that spreadsheet from Facebook if we're using lead ads and then import it and then take that whole list and start them along one of these automated journeys uh, instantly. So we import them and then we just start them in a nurture and it's the same thing. It's a little bit slower, but it's still like, honestly, it still works. And that is like all the content that we had put together today. We do have, I've got a couple of things for you. Number one is, uh, is this thing right here. And actually let me close that. So you're not looking at me anymore. This is a link for um, our pricing special right now. So if you were interested, I want you to keep this, especially um, to the end of the month, because I know that this is this special runs to the end of the month and you can take advantage of this if you're looking into keep for uh, its CRM properties or its automation or its lead capture, which is really what we were uh, covering today. Um, and I also want to give you uh, a link to free trial. Here we go. It's right here. This is our homepage. And now you're actually going to look at this a little bit differently to see all of the places that we have lead capture. There we go. And I want to put that there. And when you come here, if you click this for free trial, then you can jump in and there we go. No credit card required, 14 day free trial. And uh, you can create these processes to run automation and automation from your lead capture from landing pages and from web forms on your website. And also these same things like these landing pages that you, that you build and connect to Facebook. So if you're, you're doing lead capture with Facebook, you need something, you gotta capture that uh, information somehow. So having a landing page builder that can automate for you is gonna be golden for all your social media platforms, but especially Facebook since uh, businesses are still getting a lot of bang for their buck on Facebook. Definitely. And just the idea, no matter what kind of um, lead generation you're doing on Facebook, you're going to need a landing page. Um, so the landing page builder alone is like such a great offer, but adding all of this other stuff to your lead generation on Facebook is priceless, honestly, because if you can follow up that quickly, you're following up quicker than most of your competition. And it just helps to keep the lead warm. Right. And that nurture is something that most of your competition is not doing. Right. Like it's when you, when you get down to it, doing that much quality follow-up over a longer period of time is what makes the difference between you getting the business and them going with somebody else that is available and, uh, and in their face when their interest peaks. Like you want to be the one who gets that business. So the automated nurture, staying top of mind, being there in their inbox with your, your subject and your, your company name, that, that type of thing that is there often enough, oh, it builds what we call mind share and makes a huge difference when it comes to conversion. For sure. Well, I hope you guys liked it. Um, I hope it was what you needed. And if you have any questions, you can always message uh, Keep at Keep on Facebook and Instagram. So if you have any other questions about this, we're happy to help out. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Uh, keep an eye open for the, we will have a follow-up email go out and it will have um, a link to this recording. So if you uh, came in late and of course, if you had to leave early, then you're not here. So <laughs> I can't speak to the people left early, but you'll have access to this uh, 
uh, this content to rewatch and gather some of that information again. And feel free to share that link also. So if you know anybody, other small business owners, operators that could benefit from this, feel free to share that link out to like, anybody that's interested. All right. Again, thanks so much, everybody. Have a fantastic day. Thanks, Jack. Hey, thank you, Crystal. You're the best.